going on everyone so today we're going to be testing out and reviewing the nurs v 400 watt solar panels now i have two of these and these are updated versions that no longer need their case to support them these newer ones actually include three metal stands for each panel which props them up very nicely now as a disclaimer they did send me these panels for testing and review but if you're interested in these panels after watching this video and feel that they're right for you then i'll leave the links down below in the description as well as any coupon codes that might save you guys a few bucks thanks for watching and please stick around and watch the entire video because there's a lot of good packed information in it but we're going to go through really quickly what they come with why i wanted them and then we're going to get into some testing and show what kind of output we can get out of it when it's standing up in the stands and also laying on the ground and i'm going to show you some different ways to connect them both in series and parallel and what to look out for if you're going to do this into your solar generator so that you don't blow it up and i'll put all the specs here up on the screen for you guys just pause it if you want to know what they're rated for or the size so just pause the video and there's all the information you need. And what's nice at around 31 pounds with everything with the stand and the panels, really nice to carry in this bag on your shoulder. They also give you a set of carry handles here, but if you want something a little bit lighter weight to carry and you don't need the stand, they also give you a handle for just the panel itself. And the panel just by itself is about 17 pounds. So a lot lighter weight to carry than a lot of other 400 watt panels. And this handle just clips on here with this carabiner. So you get the case that has a nice divider in here to separate it from the brackets here. These brackets are metal. You get, of course, the user manual and an adapter here to go to XT60, 5521 aviation plug or an Anderson connector. Very nice set of adapters here. And like I said, three stands. And these stands can be adjusted to three different angles, 35 degrees, 45 or 55 degrees, depending on what angle you need to get the best angle for the sun to get the maximum output. Right now, getting closer to winter time, I'm probably gonna want a more upright because the sun's further away rather than more overhead. Or you could just lay these panels out flat on the ground when it's directly overhead. And on the back of the panel, they give you a nice, looks like waterproof case here to store your MC4 connector, a set of three stakes. And you also get a 5521 to 7909 connector. Not a whole lot of room in here to store extra wires. So keep that in mind, you'll probably have to disconnect your cables here unless you're going directly into this. You do have enough to store that cable in there. But if you have a big loop of say 50 foot or 25 foot, probably not enough room in here for that. Now, unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to review their original version of this panel. However, this is the updated version. And what's really nice about it is that this version now comes with metal stands for the back. You no longer have to use the case that it comes in to prop the panel up. A lot of people had complaints about that, about the panel wanting to bow out around the mount. And it's sort of like the EcoFlow 220 watt panel that I have, how you have to use the case to hold it up. Now they include three stands here that attach right to the back of the panel here with this Velcro on top. Really easy to attach. You get three stands for the four different panels. You put two on the end and then one right in the center. And now with these three stakes that they give you, you can put one in the bottom of each bracket to prevent the wind from blowing these panels over on a really windy day. I have the center one stake down here. You can see it can get windy, will not blow over. If you don't stake it and it gets windy, your panel could potentially blow over or change angle on you. So keep that in mind. All right, so what we're gonna do is I have two of these panels. So we're gonna keep one up facing the sun. I'm gonna lay the other one flat here and we're gonna see what the difference in output is between the two of them. But what I really like is that these are ETFE coated. They're mono crystalline panels and you can leave these out in the weather. I don't have to wrap them up if it's gonna rain or when it gets later in the evening and it gets damp out and the ground gets moist. I hate having to fold my all powers panels up because the back of them, the fabric gets wet if you leave them out too long and it gets dewy out. These I could just leave set outside. Don't have to worry if it's raining. I could take them camping with me and just leave them out the whole time I'm there. And honestly, that's why I wanted to review these panels because that's what I intend on doing. I intend on leaving these set up outside behind my house, powering the Anchor Solix F3800. I'll just leave these plugged into that continuously and it'll just keep charging it up daily. Right now, I just use an EcoFlow 220 watt panel. And then on days I was home, I would deploy the 400 watt all powers panels. But like I said, every evening I would have to take them down and put them away because I didn't really want those getting rained on but I'd way rather have two 400 watt panels outside charging it up because it is a pretty big unit. All right, everyone. So I'm using two solar panel multimeters to see how much output these will output when they're on the stands facing the sun and laying down. Right now we're getting 367 watts out of the one that's propped up on the stands facing the sun and 174.5 
out of the one that's just laying on the ground. So you get way more power if you're using the stands, so keep that in mind. Now in midsummer, if the sun was overhead, it may be a little bit more power out of the one laying on the ground versus this one. But as of now, with going into winter, fall time here, 367 watts of output at 11.4 amps. And the open circuit current of these panels are almost 41 volts. So you're definitely gonna wanna make sure that your solar generator will support panels up to at least 41 volts. Because if your solar generator only supports voltage up to say 32 volts, and you try to plug one of these panels in, you will burn it out. A lot of solar generators will take an input up to 60 volts, so you would be fine. However, you would not be able to run two of these in series if you have a 60 volt solar generator. However, you can run them in parallel as long as your solar generator will accept over 10 amps of current. Ideally, you're gonna want your solar generator to accept at least 12 amps because I've seen these outputting up to almost 12 amps. Now you can run these into your solar generator, usually even if your solar generator won't take up to 12 amps because it will limit how much power it takes in. But like I said, you never wanna go over the voltage because that's when you'll burn things up. All right, now my wife's gonna walk in front of the panel and see what kind of output we get. I believe this panel is wired in parallel so it should have good shading and it went from around 370 watts of input down to about 286 watts now she's going to go ahead and shade two of the panels and this this does take a little bit because it it uh, has to retest here so shading two of the panels down to 202 watts now we're going to go ahead and close one panel onto the other panel here and see how much output we get out of just half the panel. And we're still getting 183 watts out of this panel, even though half the panel's closed up. That's amazing. So no matter how much you shade this panel, you're still gonna get really good output unless the entire thing is shaded. That's really nice that these aren't wired in series though, because if they were and you shaded one panel, you would lose almost all your output. And now with two panels completely blocked, my wife standing in front of the third, we're getting 92.42 watts. <laughs> Thanks for the help, babe. <laughs> so really good output. All right, now let's plug these into a solar generator and see what kind of input we can get into there. Now, one thing that's really nice about having these stands separate from the panels is the fact that there's really no right way to put these up or down. If the stands were attached to the panel already, you would have to deploy them one way, just like all my other panels that I have, and the solar output always comes out one side or the other. Now, when you're deploying these, you could put one basically upside down and the other one right side up and then your two outputs will come out really close together which is going to make it really nice if you were paralleling them like i'm going to do into a solar generator you don't need extensions and you can keep these in line because if not you would either have to put them back far enough to where the front one's not interfering shading the one behind or i would have had to run a set of extension wires from the end of that panel over to these inputs here so kind of nice that you can deploy this one upside down that one right side up however you want to do it because you can set them on these brackets either way so that's one benefit to these detachable brackets and it's kind of nice if you don't even need the brackets then it's nice that they detach as well all right got one panel plugged in now the fun part of untangling this wire here and this is 10 gauge wire so i will be able to parallel these panels no problem into here even pulling around 20 some amps should be fine with this wire and like i said this solar generator will accept 12 to 150 volts 40 amp max so regardless whether i run them in parallel or in series it's not going to damage this solar generator because it will accept up to 150 volts and this is the all, all powers r3500 i don't recommend this unit i've had all kind of issues with it as far as error codes and this thing freezes up constantly on me so been messing with it now for a few months and it just i don't recommend it and just like i said this thing's junk it is froze up again can't do anything can't turn the ac outlets on or off it reverted to 50 volts for some reason can't turn nothing else on or off can't even shut the unit off the only way i found to fix this is to drain it all the way down to zero let it shut off and reset and then it tends to work fine for a while until it freezes again so i don't recommend the r3500 all right so into the blue eddy we're getting 316 watts out of the one panel ran directly into here now we are going through about a 35 foot cable and some adapters into the panel way up there so i'm sure it's going to lose a little bit from that but 316 watts pretty good 
All right, so I brought the Blue Eddy up here and plugged it directly into the solar panel. Now we're getting 328, 329 watts. So I'm getting about 12 watts or so more, not using the 35 foot cable. So really good output right here so far, 329 watts. Now let's run two of these in parallel into there and see what we can get. And you can see I didn't have this one staked down and the wind blew it over. And I do only have one stake in this one in the center and it seems to be holding just fine. So even one stake works pretty good. Now to run these panels in parallel into this unit, you're gonna need a set of adapters like this, and that's gonna keep the voltage the same around 41 volts open circuit current, and gonna multiply the amps. This unit is capable of inputting 21 amps, so should be just around reaching that limit. If we're getting a little bit over 10 amps of output per each panel, we should be maxing this out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run the negatives together of both panels, and then the positives together of both panels with this adapter and then plug them into the unit. Okay, so now we're getting 644 watts of input into the Blue Eddy. Now we're probably hitting that amperage max input of 21 amps. We're gonna plug the solar panel multimeter in and see if we get more than 644. Okay, so now we're getting 688.6 watts in at 21.75 amps of output paralleled in at 38 0.92 volts open circuit current and it's running at 31.66 volts so we are losing a little bit like i said because we are hitting the 21 amp max input limit of the blue eddy still nice at 640 some watts of input but if this would accept say 25 amps of input we'd probably be getting almost around 680 some watts 687 688 somewhere around there and that's pretty good output for day like today it's around four 30 p.m. in the afternoon sun's pretty far over that way so if it was closer or more overhead I'd probably be getting more output than this but so far I'm really happy with the output of these panels so now I'm going to go see if I have a solar generator that's charged low enough to show you running series into it because I planned on using that one today but being that that one froze up and is not accepting any solar input can't show you on that one Okay, so I drained another power station down low enough, one that will accept up to 120 volts here. This is the van powers that I reviewed way back, and they make an adapter that you can actually plug into the AC port and then charge up to 120 volts. But good luck finding that adapter because I didn't see anywhere that they sold this. But anyways, that short amount of time that I drained that down, we're up to 91% on this Blue Eddy already, still getting 603 watts in paralleled into this unit but let's unhook these hook them into there in series and see what kind of input we can get into that so now i'm going to unhook everything from the blue eddy here and to run these panels in a series like i said it's going to multiply the voltage but it's going to keep the amperage the same so to do that you want to run the positive of one panel into the negative of the other and then you run your positive and negative into your solar generator and that's going to multiply the voltage and keep the amperage the same and that's what's nice about being able to flip one of these panels over so that your wires come out in the same spot you don't need adapter wires or extension wires to be able to run these in series and now running these into series into the van powers i'm getting 656 watts 659 there so almost 660 watts, that's pretty good for this time of day. Now I can't test these with the solar panel multimeter because my multimeter is only good for up to 60 volts and I will burn it out. Because right now, the way this can, is configured, probably open circuit current right around 80 volts. On this solar generator, you can run into the XT60 up to 60 volts. So I wouldn't want to plug this configuration into there because I'd probably blow this out if I did that. You can only run it into the AC port and don't do that on any solar generator. That's pretty specific to this one here, this one and I believe the Zender. Don't try to do this with any other solar generator that's not capable of running into the AC port like that, but really good input. But the way I plan on using these is I plan on just leaving these set up behind my house so that it'll charge my Anchor Solux F3800 daily and I don't have to worry about them getting wet, like I said, because they're rated IP67. Don't have to worry about any cushion or anything getting wet because these are very, very waterproof, which is why I even wanted these panels. Now these solar panels are fairly large when unfolded. There's four separate panels. When unfolded, they're 38.2 inches tall and 96.8 inches wide. So just about eight foot one wide and just over three foot two tall. And folded up in the case, they're about 
38.3 by 24.4 inches and about two and a half inches thick. All combined, they weigh 31 pounds and just the panels alone without the stands are about 17 pounds of each. So really nice lightweight panels. All right, so now we're gonna do a comparison between the Nerves V and the All Powers 400 watt solar panel. Both 400 watt panels, both in direct sunlight facing the sun. This is pretty late in the day. The All Powers on the left is getting 225 watts and the NERS V on the right is getting 282 watts. So about 60 watt difference between the All Powers and the NERS V. The All Powers panel is definitely running at a lower amperage though, 6.16 amps. And the NERS V is outputting 8.8 .8 amps currently. Might have found a new favorite panel. All right everyone, so there you have it. There's the review of the NERS V. 400 watt solar panel. In my opinion, I think it performed really well, even outputting more than 60 watts more than the All Powers panel. And they're also about two inches shorter in distance and four inches shorter in height when they're deployed than the All Power. So pretty nice panels. I think these might be my new favorites for home, like I said, because I can leave them outside. But let me know down in the comments what you think, how you thought they performed. And if you're interested in picking these panels up, like I said, I'll leave links down below as well as any coupons I can get to save you some money please consider using them links to help support the channel and stick around for more videos like this because I plan on comparing a bunch of different 400 watt panels if I end up getting more of them. So thanks for watching everyone. See you around on the next one.